If you have been in downtown San Antonio or Austin or really any major city, you have seen them and they are the subject of Steve Spreester's Spree Thoughts. Tonight, Steve, we are talking history, hysteria and a, uh, a cupcake comparison. Yes, that's the frosting on top of the story. There are many <laughs> layers when it comes to Spree Thoughts, Myra. I have a real conflict about tonight's spree thoughts. I get that they are great ways to get around. I also fully understand that for some cities, two wheels and a motor is proving to be too much. <laughs> but what I found out in this whole journey is this scooter scourge is anything but new. Hmm. I didn't realize um, that there was all of this history to it. We, you know, sometimes with these columns, we just start by talking about an idea. And so I just started um, looking back to see what there was. And I saw the Amelia Earhart image right away. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on there? Amelia Earhart on a scooter. Look how good she's got the bomber jacket on. <laughs> that is cool. All right. Or as they called them back then, they didn't call them scooters. They called them autopeds. Motorized scooters were all the rage in New York City. Commuters, mail carriers, the upper crust of society were scooterified. The Smithsonian Magazine ran an article on the history of scooters, and that caught my attention. Smithsonian Magazine writer Jackie Mansky captured how dealing with scooters is really an age old question. It's just so interesting because we talk about the early age of transportation and how we were thinking about regulating then, and there were so many things that they had to solve. Um, at the time as this technology kept growing. And I think those are conversations we're also having today. In 1915, the Autoped was mass produced and meant for everyone from public servants to suffragettes. Described as an enlarged child scooter with a motor over the front wheels. The Autoped wasn't a commercial success, but the Motoped followed, then better and better technology followed. And in almost every case, as Mansky writes, the idea was to get them on the streets and figure out how to regulate them later. That sound familiar? <laughs> Motorized scooters have been reinvented in many forms. Think of like the cupcakes in a way, it just sort of got repackaged in this new way of thinking about it. Like the rideshare scooters are a new way of thinking about these motorized scooters, scooters, these electronic scooters that have been there for such a long time. Did you get the cupcake comparison there? I repackaged. did, repackaged. Yeah. Yeah. So what did I learn, Myra? Well, I learned that scooters have a history. How to balance the technology with the safety didn't just start with a pedestrian getting hit by a rideshare scooter along Alamo Plaza. No, it dates back a century when we hadn't even fully come to grips with cars, let alone scooters. A dilemma not yet answered in San Antonio. And when it comes to the road, the big question is, what are these e-scooters fair share of it? And we have talked about that question so many yeah. times. So if this is something new, then why is the Autoped, for example, not very well known. Yeah, well, largely because they weren't a commercial success. They were expensive for their time. Mm -hmm. Even some of the later versions never really took off. And that may be what we see play out here. Can these companies make enough money to keep our sidewalks and e-scooters? Or will they simply ride off into the sunset? By the way, if you want to read the Smithsonian Magazine article on our website, you can. It's on KSAT.com along with this week's Spree Thoughts. And always. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you, Myra. Scoot on out of here. Yeah, I'm going to scoot on out of here now. <laughs>